killing ourselves trying to live. People still think that they can find peace of mind in pills. They try to eat their way to ecstasy. They try to drink their way to pleasure. They try to smoke their way to settled nerves. They try to puff their way to popularity and push their way to power. They try to bully their way to friendship and bum their way to world peace. But I've come today to say I know where a poor man has a chance. Where a sick man can get well. Where an ignorant man can become wise. A bad man can be made good. A good man can be made better. And even a dead man can be made alive. It's in Jesus Christ. We live unto the Lord. And when we die, we die unto the Lord. Yea, the great end for which Christ died and lived again, lived always, is that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Jesus Christ is Lord. Now this word Lord means having power or authority. The Great Commission is based on the claims of our Savior's Lordship. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Lord means ownership. His lordship is based on his ownership. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now he didn't have to put a signature in the corner of a sunrise. He's the owner. to put a laundry mark in the lapel of a meadow, he's the owner. He didn't have to carve his initials in the side of the mountain, he's the owner. He didn't have to put a brand on the cattle of a thousand hills, he's the owner. He didn't have to take out a copyright on the songs that he gives the birds to sing, he's the owner. Beyond the human level, the word stands as a reverent allusion to God. Now the Orthodox Hebrew in Jesus' day is in our own. Would not even pronounce the sacred name God, Jehovah, or Yahweh. Instead, when he read the sacred and incommunicable communicable name of God, he would simply say, the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now Christians have applied this title to Christ in the latter usage. On either the human or divine level, the title Lord, Lord is a mark of respect and implied pledge of obedience. Once Simon Peter stood before a hostile crowd and said, God has made that same Christ whom you've crucified, both Lord and represents the thing that God has done to redeem us. Lord represents what we ought to do because we are redeemed. Now we ought to call him owner because he possesses absolutely our lives. In him we live and move and have our being. We ought to call him owner. We ought to call him father. 
and be obedient sons and daughters. For he's our only hope, and he's our only help. God is our refuge and our strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Therefore shall not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raids, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh walls to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder and burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Jesus is Lord because he came down the stairway of heaven. Born in Bethlehem. Hid in Egypt. Brought up in Nazareth. Baptized in Jordan. Tempted in the wilderness, he performed miracles by the roadside. He healed multitudes without medicine and made no charges for his service. He conquered everything that came up against him. He took your sins and mine and went out on Calvary and there died. While hanging on that cross, Jesus said several things. But when the thief taunted him and said, If you be the Christ, come down from the cross and save yourself and us. To that taunt, Jesus never said a mumbling word. But the silence seemed to have said, You just wait until Sunday morning. And I'll show you, I'll show you that it's better to come up out of a grave than it is to come down from a cross and he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died I mean he really died don't pay any attention to a swoon theory he died whoa he he died until the sun refused to shine he died until the veil in the temple was rent in twain he died until Matthew said the dead got up out of the grave and walked the streets after the resurrection he died the centurion says surely this must have been the son of God I'm trying to say he died but I don't like I, I, I don't like to I don't like to stay there talking about he died I, I like to rush on and say he was barely in Joseph's new tomb, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Now that used to bother me. The one who holds the waters in the hull of his hand and meets out the heavens with a span, comprehends the dust and weighs the mountains in a scale and a hill in the balance. The one who walked on the brow of nothing and with a gesture of his hands, words were formed. Scooped out the seas with the palm of his hand, dug deep the gorges, piled up the hills, and propped up the mountains by his will. The moon and stars lean on his arm, being buried in a forest too. Well, he wasn't gonna stay there long, so it stayed in the grave long enough to clean it out and make it a pleasant place to wait for the resurrection. And on schedule, he got up with every form of power in the orbit of his omnipotence. Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, men were thinking that maybe one of these days his power is going to fail.
faith. They are thinking that one of these days that somebody will wrestle his power from it. Some have in mind they're going to destroy his power. Well, brother, if you're going to destroy his power, what are you going to use for power? If you try to destroy him by fire, he'll refuse to burn. If you try to destroy him by water, he'll walk on the water. If you try to destroy him by a strong wind, the tempest will lick his hand and lay down at his feet. If you try to destroy him by law, you'll find no fault in him. If you try to destroy him by a seal of an empire, he'll break it. If you try to destroy him by putting him in a grave, he'll rise. If you try to destroy him by rejection or ignoring him, soon you'll hear a still small voice saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If a man will open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is the pearl from paradise. He's the gem from the glory land. He's truth's fairest jewel and he's time's choicest theme. He's life's strongest cord and he's life's clearest ray. He's purity's whitest peak. He's joy's deepest tide. His name stands as a synonym for free healing, friendly help, and full salvation. His blessed name is like honey to the taste. It's like harmony to the ear. It's like help to the soul. It's like hope to the heart. He's higher than the heavens of heavens, and he's holier than the holy of holies. In his birth is our significance. In his life is our example. In his cross is our redemption, and in his resurrection is our hope. At his birth, men came from the east, and at his death, men came from the west. And the east and the west met in him. Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigned. And at his name, to his name, in his name, every knee is going to bow and every tongue to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee, the young knee, every knee, the old knee, every knee, the white knee, every knee, the black knee, every knee. Wounded knee, every knee is gonna bow. And every tongue is gonna confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, uh, many say, I've got a lot of living to do. I'll accept Him as Savior, and I'll acknowledge Him as Lord, uh, but I've got a lot of living to do. You don't really live until you come to Him who said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And then some I hear praying, Lord, when I must go somewhere and crawl up in a dying bed and learn how to die, brother, who told you you were going anywhere else? <laughs> and who told you you were going to have the strength or the time to crawl up in a dying bed? And who told you you had to learn how to die? You learn how to live. And as you live, so you die. But I'm not going to wait because borderline salvation is better than being lost. But that's too dangerous to risk. That's the reason the prophet said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And he will have mercy to our God for he will abundantly pardon. I'm not going to wait. I acknowledge him as my Lord now. The Lord is love. And his love is stronger than sin. It's deeper than sorrow and it's mightier than death. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my high tower. The Lord is my shield and my buckler. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know, this old world is a wilderness of want. We're always wanting something. A man will break his health down trying to get well. And then he'll turn around 
spend his wealth trying to get his health back. If it isn't one thing, it's another. From the rocking in the cradle to the folding in the grave, something is always running out. If your bank account gets low, then your blood pressure gets high. If you've got money, your health breaks down. If you've got a job, your eyesight gets dim. If you've got food on your table, your faith gets weak. If it's not your enemies bothering you, it's your so-called friends. If it's not your kinfolk mooching off of you, it's your church folk. And while you're building up over here, it's falling apart over there. But the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A little girl was asked to recite this verse and she said, The Lord is my shepherd and that's all I want. They said she's wrong. I said she's right. The Lord is my shepherd, and that's all I want. I shall not want for rest, for he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I shall not want for refreshment, for he leadeth me beside the still waters. I shall not want for forgiveness, for he restoreth my soul. I shall not want for guidance. For he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I shall not want for companionship. For yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. I shall not want for comfort, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I shall not want for sustenance or provision, for thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I shall not want for joy, for thou anointest my head with all oil my cup runneth over i shall not want for anything in this life for goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall not want for anything in the life to come for i'll dwell in the house of the lord forever i didn't say i'll camp a tent a tabernacle but i'll dwell in the house of the lord forever i'll dwell in a land where we'll never grow old. I'll dwell out there where the silence of eternity is interpreted by love. I'll dwell in the sun-kissed regions of an unclouded day. Dwell in a city that hath foundation, whose building makers God. Dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus Christ is Lord. I found this sermon tonight and it hit me so hard that I just had to share it with y'all. I hope y'all enjoy it. I hope it gets you inspired, motivated, fired up because it has helped me tonight and I needed a little help. I'm telling you, it's been a rough day. Got a lot going on and uh, you know, this sermon brings it down to its basics. The love our Lord has for us is amazing and we should focus on him when things get rough and that's what this sermon did for me it helped me bring myself back to focusing on the Lord and that's where I need to be you know so I hope y'all enjoyed it I'm gonna drop off there and uh I'll catch you on the next ride. God bless all of you far and beyond your wildest dreams.